Hey, what is going on guys? This is Bailey, and today I'm going to give you my full review of the Ocatel U8. You probably haven't heard of Ocatel before, but they're a small Chinese smartphone producer that recently entered the consumer market. The U8 is a prime example of Ocatel's effort to make a phone with a form over function mentality. And that shines through immediately when you take a look at the phone. On the face of the phone you'll find a curved display which meets the U8's aluminum frame. The transition between the glass and aluminum is seamless and feels natural when swiping in or out on the screen. The aluminum frame gives the U8 a very nice look and feel. The matte plastic on the back of the phone is also curved to meet with the aluminum frame. Although Ocatel did use plastic for the back, it still feels very nice with a sort of soft touch finish. The corners of the phone are flawlessly curved and the build quality is surprisingly good. Despite the size of Ocatel and their Chinese origin, the U8 feels incredibly solid. And no, the Ocatel U8 does not bend. It's also really heavy though at 199 grams, making the U8 sort of like a brick. That could be a problem for some users, but I got used to the extra weight after just a few days of use. It's also 7.9mm thick. Unfortunately, there isn't a notification LED on the U8, nor is there backlighting on the three bottom capacitive keys. The 5 megapixel front facing camera is positioned to the right of the earpiece and is interpolated to 8 megapixels. With a 5.5 inch 720p display, the U8 is in phablet territory for many people. Despite the low resolution, the display looks pretty good. Colors are punchy, color temperature is neutral, and viewing angles are also pretty good. Sunlight readability could have been better, but it's still decent for the price. There is no Gorilla Glass, but I haven't noticed any scratches on my review unit at least, after nearly a week of use. I did notice a small amount of backlight bleeding though on the right side of the display, but it's not so noticeable unless you're looking at a dark image with brightness set to high. Speaking of brightness, the screen does get bright enough for most use cases, but the lowest brightness setting is still pretty bright when in dark environments. The rear speaker on the Ocatel U8 is, unfortunately, very tinny and distorted. It's not an issue of volume, but rather quality. If you want to listen to music or watch a video, you pretty much have to use headphones or a Bluetooth speaker. That's really disappointing, and I'm hoping that Ocatel will improve this in future models. The 8 megapixel rear camera, which is interpolated to 13 megapixels, actually takes some nice looking images. Ocatel has told me that it is an Omnivision sensor, and I think it's certainly capable for the price. It does have a lower dynamic range, but shots overall looked good for the most part. The camera app is just the open source MediaTek app, so nothing is really different from other MediaTek devices. The Ocatel U8 ships with the latest version of Android, Android 5.1 Lollipop. It does include many stock Android elements like the lock screen, notification panel, Google keyboard, and settings app. However, Ocatel did replace the launcher and multitasking menu with their own variants. The launcher doesn't include an app drawer, which could be an uncomfortable change for some Android users. There's also custom icons, but luckily you can install a third party launcher like the Google Now launcher for example to get the stock icons back. Because of that, I don't really see the launcher as a disadvantage. However, the multitasking menu is just plain awful. It isn't incredibly responsive, nor is it any better than the default menu found in stock Lollipop. I really miss the cards that showed what I was looking at in each app while using the U8. For example, Chrome tabs just showed up as separate instances, and there's no way to distinguish which instance is for which tab unless you open up each one individually. That's really frustrating, and I wish that Ocatel would have instead kept the stock multitasking menu instead of developing their own. Another negative point currently is that you can't swipe right to dismiss notifications. I had this same problem on the Jai US3, where you have to swipe left, or what I consider backwards anyways, to dismiss notifications. I was told that this is a bug and it will be fixed in the future, but as it stands, it's a pretty annoying bug. The Ocatel U8's gesture support is surprisingly good, with gestures to take screenshots or screenshot clips, open the camera, or adjust the volume. There's also a double tap to wake in addition to several other letter gestures for when the phone's display is off. I really like the ability to, say, change the volume by sliding with two fingers. As far as updates go, it seems that Ocatel will support the U8 with occasional firmware updates, but it's still really tough to say whether the U8 will be updated to future versions of Android, for example the upcoming Android M. 
We can hope, but you really should just expect to stay on Lollipop if you buy this phone. That's unfortunate though, as software support is often an important factor when purchasing a new phone. Performance on the Ocatel U8 was better than I had anticipated, but it's still on the slower side. Using it day to day though wasn't a problem, and I think it's still better than most phones shipping with its Snapdragon 400. The quad-core 64-bit MediaTek MT6735M is clocked at just 1GHz, however the 2GB of RAM is relatively fast according to Antutu. I'm just really glad that Ocatel didn't skip on RAM and decided to go with 2GB as going with 1GB of RAM would have been really detrimental to performance. The Mali T720 GPU was enough to play most games, including Asphalt 8. The 2850mAh internal battery was enough to get me from 7am to 9.30pm with nearly 4 hours of screen on time. That was with the brightness set to 100% however, and it seems that the display does take quite a bit of energy despite being of lower resolution. I also used Wi-Fi during the entirety of the test, since the phone only supports 2G speeds on my carrier, so if you're going to be using HSPA Plus or 4G LTE for that matter, you'll likely drain the battery much faster. Battery life is good, but I don't consider it as a strong point. After all, the phone's hardware shouldn't be taking that much energy to begin with, so the results are kind of expected. The phone does support Bluetooth, 802.11n Wi-Fi, and GPS. I found the Wi-Fi signal to be a bit weak when going outdoors, and oftentimes unusable. Unfortunately, I also wasn't able to get GPS working accurately. During my testing, it would either continuously attempt to lock or just be totally inaccurate. Call quality was about average with no issues to report. It does support up to 4G LTE in certain markets, but the best it can do in the United States is up to 2G on either AT&T or T-Mobile. There is a fingerprint reader on the back of the device, but I didn't find it to work very well. It is a tap to scan reader, so you don't need to swipe, but I found that it only works about 1 in 4 times. That's kind of disappointing, but it's nice when it does actually work. It also should work when the phone is locked, so you can just place your finger over the reader to unlock and wake the phone. Finally, the software for the fingerprint reader is really good with a great integration into Android. It doesn't feel intrusive when using the lock screen, nor does it get in the way when you use Smart Lock. The Ocatel U8 is available in black or white for $170 with 16GB of internal storage. You can expand that with a microSD card, up to 32GB, but you will have to give up one of the SIM slots to do so. Obviously, if 16GB is enough, you don't have to worry about this, but it is something to keep in mind. If you do buy the Ocatel U8, you will receive a bold orange box with a SIM door eject tool, quick start guide, micro USB cable, and AC adapter. The choice Ocatel made to bring a design of this caliber to this price point is bold and quite frankly refreshing. In a market filled with poorly built, ultra cheap Chinese smartphones, all trying to win a spec to price ratio war, it's nice to see a company focusing on what's more important for many people, design and build quality. After all, what's a cheap spec out phone if it takes forever to ship and it just bends in your pocket? The Ocatel U8 has an exceptional design, great display, and the latest version of Android. On the other hand, the speaker quality is very poor, the performance is far from what you can get out of some other phones, and it does have GPS issues. Of course, there are better spec phones available, like the Asus Zenfone 2 and Meizu M2 Note, but I think that the Ocatel U8 targets an entirely different market, one that craves premium construction over specifications. Ocatel has plenty of time to build a smartphone that combines form and function, and the U9 looks promising. So in the meantime, should you buy the U8? No, probably not. However, the Ocatel U8 is more representative of the company's goals than it is a product. To me, the Ocatel U8 represents a company willing to go back to square one to build a beautiful and well-built phone, even for those on a budget. And that is what's really exciting about the U8. As always, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions about the Ocatel U8. That is going to be all for this video. Thank you for watching and please be sure to subscribe.